Let's have a look at the Fortinet hypervisor and a couple of practical steps to configure your hypervisor in your environment. In my lab environment, I've got two Fortinet hypervisor 500Ds and I've connected them to each other via an external Fortinet switch. So one of the first recommendations after doing an upgrade, make sure you're on the latest version on your hypervisor, is to select the external interfaces. Look at the specific ports that you've connected from the hypervisor to your switch. Confirm the VLANs and just configure that as an alias. It's easier when you look at the next steps to reference those VLANs in the specific configurations. After your external interfaces, you want to look at configuring a virtual switch. In my case, um, what I've done for testing was just to configure everything in bridge mode. If it's connected directly from the 40 hypervisor to the switch, you can connect it using the pass-through mode. You don't need to select it as a bridge mode. You also don't have to select an external interface. The specific VLAN will then be used within the hypervisor itself. Once you've got the virtual switch, you can go and select the image you want to upload. In this case, we wanted to upload the, the 40 gate image. Important thing to know is when you download the image, make sure it is the KVM format. And when you unzip it, you will see it will be unzipped into a Q COW2 format. Give it a file name. Storage will be hard drive one in my example. Select OK. And then you create the second image and that will be my hard drive for that image. In this case, I'm just using hard drive two for it. Once you've got that set, your image configured, you can go to the virtual machine and that's where you add everything together. So from create new name the firewall under the disk you want to select your image for in this case it's from hard drive one and then the disk image that will be used is from a hard drive two and on the interfaces i'm allocating three interfaces one port will be used for management and the other two ports will be used for my trusted zone and untrusted zone in my configurations Once you've got that selected, you can just select OK. When you, you can see I've selected auto start in the configuration there, which means the status will change from power off onto running. You can, once it's in running state, status, you can select yeah. on the image, click on console, and you will be able to log on to the console. One of the first steps you want to do is just to go into the interfaces, configure the interfaces so that you can actually connect to the firewall. As an example here, I've got my 40 gate configured, I've got a 40 manager and 40 analyzer configured on one hypervisor. So what I've done after starting it up, just configure, to the, um, configure the IP addresses, and then I could connect to both the manager and to the analyzer. And from there, you can do all the configurations you wanted to do. That's the practical steps to configure and to get going on your 40 hypervisor. Thank you for watching.